Welcome to Link G4X Training Part 28. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at working with our idle control and specifically our manual or basic style idle control that we have available to program in our PC Link software. So the basic idle control is going to be using our spark timing to feedback to manipulate our engine torque to make the engine idle where we want it to be at. Now, this is not going to be using an idle control solenoid or an idle control motor to be able to add additional airflow into our engine. We're going to be assuming we have our throttle plate open in a fixed amount. So this is going to be the most simplistic way you can work with your idle control on a race engine that's lacking an idle control motor. There's a lot of things to cover in this video, so let's jump in so we can check everything out. All right, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our idle control programming within our PC Link software. Now this specific idle training tutorial here, we're gonna be focusing on our basic style idle control. This is gonna be where we have a fixed amount of airflow coming into our engine from our throttle plate being open a certain amount. And then we're gonna be using our spark timing to dynamically change the spark timing amount that the engine's going to be seeing at idle conditions in order to manipulate our idle torque. By changing our idle torque, we can hit a desired idle speed that we're gonna be setting in the software. We're not gonna be using an idle control motor, so whether it's gonna be a stepper motor or a pulse with modulated style idle control motor, it's not gonna have that as allowing a additional amount of airflow bypass into our engine. This is gonna be focusing on just, again, having a fixed amount of airflow from the throttle stop being open a certain fixed amount on our throttle body, a regulated amount of airflow, and using spark timing to dynamically change our engine's torque to hit the desired idle speed. It sounds complicated, it's actually really simple. So let's go here from our basics page and we're gonna move across here into our idle specific page. Now in here, we're gonna to start to do our programming and control. Now we do have a lot of tables and a lot of things to normally program when we're working with a stepper motor or a pulse with modulated style idle control motor. In this configuration here, we're gonna have little to change. We'll find that the Link software has really dumbed down this ignition timing feedback compared to the G4 Plus system. So if you're coming from a G4 Plus, we would have a three-dimensional table where we could use or idle error, so how far we were off from a target to the actual, it would feed back a certain amount of spark timing that we would implement into the table. That's gone. It's actually gonna have a really basic idle ignition control parameters that we're gonna work with down here, and it's gonna be more of a PID-based style control. So if you don't understand what PID control is going to be, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. It'll make a bit more sense. So what we're trying to accomplish here, as uh, before we jump in and start to program and work with this, what we're trying to accomplish is to regulate the idle torque. The idle torque is gonna to get us to our desired idle speed. So it might be a little bit unfamiliar of a concept of working with torque at idle, but what we'll find is that typically engines will idle anywhere between six to 10 pound-feet of torque at idle. In that range, it's gonna hit our desired idle RPM that we wanna be after. So normally, we're gonna be saying when we're working with idle control that we wanna hit a desire, desired idle RPM. So we'll find whatever our actual engine RPM is going to be at, and then we'll compare it to whatever the target would be at. And then we'll find that it regulates the amount of airflow coming into the engine with an idle control solenoid and or our spark timing can be varied to achieve a higher idle RPM. The way that we're achieving a high, higher idle RPM is going to be from allowing more airflow and more spark timing to achieve more idle torque. So when we're talking about idle control, we always are actually talking about torque or torque production or torque limitation at idle to achieve what we want to be after to allow the engine to idle where we want it to be at. So ultimately, we just need to realize that we're just moving our torque production of our engine around with our idle control. Whether it's going to be inducing more airflow through the idle control solenoid, which will regulate that amount of torque if we feed more airflow in as a natural reaction to feeding more airflow, we're going to be putting more fuel in and then we would have our spark timing regulated. That's going to produce more idle torque. If we reduce the airflow through an idle control solenoid, we'll be reducing the amount of torque the engine can produce and our idle speed will drop. Now we have the same kind of idea here if we're working with our spark timing. If we increase our spark timing, we'll be then increasing our cylinder pressure and then building more torque at idle. If we reduce more torque, the engine's naturally going to be idling higher. If we reduce the timing, we're gonna find that's gonna be dropping our cylinder pressure a little bit, and then it will reduce the engine's torque production and bring our idle speed down. So we'll find we have a balancing act with idle control between getting a certain amount of airflow into the engine and getting our spark timing in the range it needs to be at in order to make the engine happy, in order to get the torque production right, so the engine is gonna idle right where we'd like it to be at. Now, a couple things about this, if we're talking about airflow and spark timing, we're gonna find the engine is gonna be much more reactive as far as our torque production and maintaining our idle speed 
if we have the airflow relatively fixed, so the airflow is not moving around a lot, but we're dynamically controlling our spark timing, we'll find in most cases, if we're talking about an idle control motor itself, we're gonna find that that motor is gonna take a bit of time. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.